Welcome to another lesson from Jiggy Math. So this time, we will talk about implicit differentiation. So what is implicit differentiation? So if we do have implicit, there's also what we call explicit. So what is the difference between explicit and implicit differentiation? Explicit differentiation is just like what we do normally. So that's the usual differentiation that we do. So for example, if uh, the function is written in this form, which is y is equal to f of x, so we differentiate that, that's what we call explicit differentiation. So for example, y is equal to 3x squared. So we differentiate this explicitly, so the answer would be dy with respect to x, where dy dx is equal to 6x. Now what about implicit differentiation? So if the function is not written as y is equal to f of x, then we can still differentiate that, but not in an explicit way, but implicit. For example, the equation of a circle or equation of a unit circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. If you notice, this is not written in y is equal to f of x, because in the first place, unit circle is not a function. But we can still differentiate this by uh, not rearranging the terms. So if we are not rearranging the terms, we can still differentiate that. That's what we call implicit differentiation. So the question now is, how do we differentiate implicitly? So one important rule that we need in implicit differentiation is the chain rule. So the chain rule, as we recall, is dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. So this is an important rule in implicit differentiation. So let's say, for example, y is equal to, to u. Now we can uh, use the chain rule if we assume that u is a function of x. So applying the chain rule that's going to be the dy over du, okay, and that is our y is 2u, so the first factor is going to be the derivative of 2u with respect to u, all right? And since u is a function of x, so that will be multiplied to the derivative of u with respect to x. And in the end, we will get the dy over dx because we can cancel out the du here, right? Now, later on, we can actually simplify the derivative of 2u with respect to u because, as you notice, the variables are the same, okay? Now, let's take, an, uh, let's take a look at another example. So this time, y is equal to w squared. So... But we need to assume that w is a function of x so that we can have a composite function because chain rule is applied if we do have composite functions. So we can express our, our chain rule as dy over dx is equal to dy over dw times dw with respect to x. So our y is w squared. So the first factor can be written as the derivative of w squared with respect to w. And then uh, the next factor will be, since w is a function of x, then that's going to be times dw over dx. So um, if you notice, we can now come up with a something like a generalization, wherein y is equal to any function of y, all right, f of y, but we need to assume that y is a function of x so that we can have a composite function. In fact, the composite function is going to be written just like this. So f of f of x. So the chain rule now when we apply is going to be dy over dx is equal to the derivative of our fy with respect to y times dy over dx. Now let's take a look at specific examples. So this again is a big concept, an important concept that we will be using for implicit differentiation. Now, example number one is differentiate x squared plus y squared is equal to one. So without rearranging the terms, let's differentiate each term, okay? Now, 
there are three uh, there are two terms at the left side and then we have one at the right side so we have to differentiate one by one okay so the first term is just x square by the way when we differentiate our goal is to find dy over dx so how do we differentiate x square now with respect to x so for x square we can do it explicitly correct so because x with respect to x so that 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 is what that that has the same variable so directly we can have the derivative of x squared to be equal to 2x okay now another one is 1 which can be expressed as 1 times x to the power of 0 so we can also directly differentiate that and the derivative of 1 as we know is just 0 okay now second term this is the one that has a y okay so that's one thing that you need to look at if the equation that we are differentiating if the term has a y then we have to apply the chain rule so let's go back to the important rule that we discussed earlier so the derivative of f y so in this case our f of y is y square so it is going to be the derivative of y square with respect to y and then just affix the dy over dx okay so this is now uh, the derivative of the second term so now the next thing to do is just simplify whatever we can simplify so if you look at the second term we can simplify this we can get the value so the derivative of y squared with respect to y because the variables are the same all right so this is just 2y and then copy dy over dx affix dy over dx so once again our main goal is to find dy over dx so what we can do is we transpose 2x to the other side that will become negative 2x all right and then um, to find dy over dx we can divide the whole equation by 2y and we will get dy over dx equals negative 2x over 2y cancel out the 2 and then the derivative will be negative x over y now notice that when we do implicit differentiation we will have our derivative that is expressed in terms of x and y oftentimes it's going to be like that so dy dx will have both x and y most of the time all right now let's try to verify using explicit differentiation we know that the unit circle is not a function but let's just verify okay so um when we do explicit differentiation we meaning we have to make y as the subject so it is going to be like this y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x square now just for verification purpose we just set aside the plus or minus first okay and then let's do the explicit differentiation so um, this is 1 minus x squared to the power of 1 half okay so the derivative of that is 1 half times 1 minus x squared to the power of negative half and then multiply to the negative to the derivative of 1 minus x squared which is negative 2x so simplify that it will become negative x over square root of 1 minus x squared so notice that square root of 1 minus x squared is actually our y so you see it's the same okay so so notice that we can differentiate even curves that are not functions okay and and the method that we're going to use is implicit differentiation there will also be times wherein it is difficult even though we have a function it is very difficult to make y as the subject okay so in that case the strategy to be used is to differentiate that implicitly all right okay now let's take a look at the second example so we have this um, this curve okay we are not really sure if this is a function but this is a curve wherein it has uh, two variables x and y so first thing to look at is all of the terms okay so which terms have just the x okay so if, if they do have only x then we can just directly differentiate those okay we can use explicit differentiation so you can see here sine x it has just x so the derivative of sine x will be cosine x 
And then there's another one here, which is ln x. The derivative of that is 1 over x. So after we're done with it, let's take a look at the remaining terms. So notice that e to the power of 2y and cosine y have the y variable. So in this case, we have to apply the chain rule. So let's start with e to the power of 2y. So applying chain rule, so what you need to do is to differentiate e to the power of 2y and then just affix the dy over dx. So e to the power of 2y, the derivative of that is 2e to the power of 2y. Then we need to affix the dy over dx. Now, similarly, we do chain rule also for cosine y. Cosine y, the derivative of that is negative sine y. And then after that, we just have to affix also the dy over dx. So it is going to be equal now to negative sine y dy over dx. So, but we have to uh, remember that our goal is to find dy over dx. So what we need to do is to put all of those with dy over dx at one side and then the ones without at the other side. Okay, so then factor out the dy over dx and then divide the right side by that factor, then we will have the dy over dx. Now let's answer the third example. A curve is given by the implicit equation 3x squared plus y cubed equals 11. So the first question is, show that the point 1, 2 lies on the curve. And letter B, find the gradient of the curve at this point. So let's answer letter A. So how do we show that the point 1, 2 lies on the curve. So all we need to do is to substitute the value of x to the equation and also the value of y. So it's going to be 3 times 1 square plus 2 cubed and it must be equal to 11. So 3 plus 8 is equal to 11. So 1, 2 lies on our curve. Second question is find the gradient to the curve at this point. So the point is 1, 2 and we need to find the gradient. So which means we need to find the derivative. And since we have 3x squared and then y cubed combined at one side of the equation, so we have to uh, differentiate this implicitly. Okay, so let's start with 3x squared. This doesn't have a y, so let's just directly differentiate that to be 6x. And then 11 here is just equal to, the derivative of 11 is just 0. But the second term, y cubed, then we have to apply the chain rule, okay? So chain rule, it's going to be 3y squared and then um, the derivative of y over dx or just affects dy over dx. And then uh, manipulate this in such a way that dy over dx becomes the subject of the equation and we will now have negative 6x over 3y squared. Simplify that further, it's going to be negative 2x over y squared. But uh, remember that when we are looking for the derivative, it means we are finding the gradient. Now, the specific point is 1, 2. So negative 2x over y squared to get our particular gradient, we need to substitute 1 to x and then 2 to y. So dy over dx will be negative 2 times 1 divided by 2 squared. So therefore, our gradient is negative 1 half. So the gradient of the curve at point 1, 2 is negative 1 half. Now, let's also differentiate this one wherein um, there will be a combination of quotient rule, chain rule, and product rule. So xy squared plus y over x is equal to 1 is what we are going to differentiate. So the first term is xy squared. So it has a y, so meaning we have to apply the chain rule. y over x, it also has a y, then we also have to apply the chain rule. Now, to make it easier to differentiate this, we can rewrite this as xy squared plus y x to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. So it would be easier for us to just apply product rule instead of a product rule and a quotient rule. Now, let's start with the first term, xy squared. So remember product rule, um, let's derive first x, which is equal to 1, and then copy y squared, then plus we copy x. And then we derive y squared. So how do we differentiate y squared? It is going to be 2y, then affix dy over dx. So that this is only for the first term. 
Now let's move on to the second term. I put a bracket here to distinguish the derivative of the first term and the second term. Now let's move on to the second term. So second term, uh, let's differentiate y, which is just dy over dx, and then copy x to the power of negative 1, then plus y, then derive x to the power of negative 1, which is negative x to the power of negative 2. And then equals derivative of 1 is just 0. So the same strategy, let's combine all of those with dy over dx, which is going to be like this at the left side. And then equals uh, y square, trans, trans, uh, transfer that to the other side is negative y square. And uh, this one, which is a negative um, y x to the power of negative 2 will become positive x to the power of negative 2 times y. Okay, and then factor out dy over dx and then uh, divide that to the left side and this will be our derivative. All right, so that's it for today. I hope that you have become so familiar with implicit differentiation. So thank you very much and see you next time. Goodbye.